speaker number two. Now let me ask you guys a question. Have you ever in your life come upon somebody that has just taken you on and taught you lessons? Well, when I moved into Chinatown, I actually had this experience. I was doing a little traveling, came from Knob Hill, moved to Chinatown into a place where there was two apartments. There was the middle apartment and then the top apartment. When I moved there, I always thought that there was nobody upstairs and it was really quiet and nice. And that's when I met Mama. Now, Mama is a 90-year-old Cantonese woman who's about yay tall and you could pick her up with one hand. And it's, but she is really powerful. And this woman I, I, is just... She sounds very quiet when she's around her family, but when she asked me to help her out, or to move something, or to go to the grocery store, this woman lights up like the biggest Christmas tree ever and will just tell me everything in her mind. And thankfully she does, because as I started helping Mama, I was really kind of concerned and wondering why, I know, why, why am I helping out an old Cantonese woman for carrying like 50 pound bags of rice and <laughs> other vegetables and stuff when it's just down the street. But, you know, Mama just always seemed to come over and thank me by giving me a little presents, you know, a little you know, pokey or something fun like that. And, you know, this went on for about a month. You know, I'd help her on the weekends, but then one day she came down and told me, you know, oh, we we have to go, we have to go get food. I'm like, all right, Mama, you don't have to tell me twice, just let me have a little. <laughs> and so we're walking, and Mama said to me, she's like, Bo, you're too nice. And I'm like, really? She's like, no, 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 you're too nice. I need to make you into me. <laughs> and I said, I said, Mama, come on, baby, how am I supposed to, how am I supposed to make anything other than myself? And she's like, no, no, no. Canton, we walk different and feel different. And she came to instruct me on these kind of things. And she would give me little idioms. And I want to share with you guys a couple of the tips that she gave me. Now, in Chinatown, obviously, everyone's walked through there. We all know that it is crowded. On the weekends between Stockton, when you get on Stockton between Pacific and Washington, you might as well just not be walking because you're just kind of moving slowly in a gelatinous mode to and through people. But she taught me different things. And she said, Bo, oh, if you want to move people, you have to walk like they're already gone. <laughs> now, now, she looked at me like this. I was dressed just like this. And she goes, no. And she had me bend down because she was very short. And did this. And then this. <laughs> and I was like, Mama, what's going on? She's like, if you want to be a big walker, you have to look big. <laughs> so wind blows and billows and flops out and you take up a lot more room. And sure enough, people would start kind of meandering a little bit so you get a little bit more room. So you don't have that kind of claustrophobic, you're in the middle of a thousand people feeling. And, but then she said, well, you're almost there. But you have to know where you're going. I said, Mama, come on, we're just going to the same place. She said, no. You look at the crowds of people, but you just look at people. Look where you have to go. And I didn't think about that for a moment. Now, you've all had this experience. You're walking through there, and we have the cars going back and forth, creating this empty space, and then the green hits, and the man, the little walking symbol, nails. Now you are in a battle between 50 people over there that want to get to where you are, and you want to get to where they are. And her advice was just to look where you wanted to go, and go. But I didn't have the tools. And Mama gave me the tools for being able to do that. And I'm going to share these with you guys. Now, when you're carrying a 50-pound bag of rice on your, on your back like this, and the vegetables like this, you kind of walk as a bigger person. But when there's huge crowds, every once in a while I'd feel these two hands on the backs on my back, you know, and I had a feeling, okay, Mama's just back there because obviously I can create more weight, but there was like a force and pushing <laughs> happening. 
And whenever more people would come, more pushing and more force would happen. And I was like, so imagine, if you will, being at Stockton and uh, Pacific, and then being force pushed more than two blocks to find out that you finally made it. And I look back at her and said, Mama, what, what, were you pushing me back all the way through all these crowds? And she said, oh, you are a very good snow plow. <laughs> and I was like, this is what I thought about. I was like, I'm, I'm like well, why did you push me through? And she's like, well, if you're small like me, you need big friends. <laughs> you know, something to think about. And so I actually used this the other day. I had somebody who was of equal height and weight proportion. I had to walk to Bart as fast as possible and used said technique. But I even created one more, which I haven't shared with Mama yet. Which is, you put the two hands on the back, but you have to put them more in the middle so that nothing kind of, you know, push through. So then you push, as they turn, you follow them, and I call that drafting. Because uh, <laughs> they turn, and then you just keep going as if nothing happens. So, <laughs> so Mom was very proud of that. Now, the little lesson is, in all of this, is that this woman had no reason to really become a friend of mine. She had no reason to say anything. And having known this woman now, it has been kind of a very inspiring, to say the least, uh, turn of events in my life. So even though I'm used as a pack mule to carry <laughs> huge amounts of rice, and now I can even tell you how to find perfectly ripe mangoes without even seeing them, it's the little lessons I got from Mama that are really helping me out in regards to more of my own life. So my advice to you is to take the little lessons that you're given and to put them in your life and to apply them even in the least known place. Thank you.